Okay, so hello, welcome to the Tinker Cat in Bajika presents Tinker. Ah, la, 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 la. Huh. So, hi guys, welcome to Tinker Cat and Bajika present this special Tinker Together webinar. This is specifically for students over 13 because we're going to be using some software and some features that are only for those who are over 13 years of age. So if you're on this actual webinar and you're under 13, please make sure you're with a parent or guardian who has given you permission and are with you at this time. Before we get started, we're gonna wait a couple minutes for everybody to get onto the webinar. But for you to make sure you're ahead of the game already, I'm gonna say right now that the couple of things that you're gonna need is pen, or any other writing utensil if you're not a fan of um, writing with a pen. Da, da, da. And I'm also going to add this to the chat. Paper, as well as a Tinkercad or an Autodesk account. If you don't have one, this will be the perfect time to actually sign up and create one. And if you're having trouble signing up, feel free to ask me a question in the Q&A section. So we're going to get started around 2.10. So feel free to get those items ready in order to follow along with us during today's session. Today's session, we can make it into two hours. But what I really want to make sure is that we get the basics down. So when we do projects the rest of the week, you can follow along and slowly start adding your skills. So once again, you'll need a pen or any other writing utensil. You'll need paper. And make sure you have a Tinkercad account or any other Autodesk account. I know some of you have Autodesk accounts because of other Autodesk software, such as Autodesk Fusion 360, et cetera, that you can actually log into your Tinkercad account with, thankfully. So you don't have to keep 15,000 usernames and passwords on you in order to be in this. So we're going to give people a couple more minutes to do that. I'm going to put myself on mute while you get that straight, and then we'll get started. So to break the ice a little bit, as you can see, my very trusty, I call them my catting goggles because they help me get in the zone when I'm catting. And during these best and worst of times, I also like them because anytime I'm soldering, I'm very sensitive to solder. And if you don't know what soldering is, it's basically when you take molten or melted, melted metal in order to create some connections on electronics. I like to use these along with a typical face mask before all this happened because I used to get really huge headaches and I still wanted to be able to see what I was actually soldering. So these are my trusty dusty <laughs> goggles for that. Now they're usually just my Tinkercad goggles or my Fusion 360 goggles because it makes me feel like I'm one of those hackers from like those 1990s hacker films or like I'm in some kind of heist movie and I'm like the nerd in the heist movie. It gives me a vibe. I also sometimes, but I won't do it for here, but since this is my catting desk, I also have my pair of like gloves to complete the whole look because why just go 25, 50% into a look when you can go 100% and just have the whole vibe happening. So this is me right now. I'm not gonna actually wear these while I'm using um, the software we're gonna use today, just because I wanna be able to multitask a little faster than usual, because I'm gonna be managing this webinar, Tinkercad, Fusion 360, hint, hint, nod, nod, and a couple other things during this two hour session. So these kind of constrict my hands. I like to use them for training to make sure I get stronger better faster is it stronger better bigger stronger better faster whatever the daft punk lyrics are i like to use these to kind of train myself so i can be better with my catting but don't tell my students especially for those familiar with using cad software and if you don't no worries about to go through all of that but i want to train myself so i don't have to use an external mouse i can just use my trackpad and this adds enough resistance and weight 
to my movements that allows for me to train up. But that's also just me because I'm just, you know, hardcore. And for those who don't know, my name is Nisha McRae. I'll be your host for this Tinkercad X Bajika webinar. Bajika is my nonprofit STEM organization. And pretty much I started it 10 years ago because I found myself as an undergraduate at MIT who was wondering why a lot of my colleagues didn't have the maker background that I did growing up. Because when I was growing up, I was doing woodworking, I was doing metalworking, I was welding by the time I was 12 in my dad's garage. I was doing arts and crafts with my mom. So I was like a beast when it came to hot glue gun. I was thoroughly starting to dabble into electronics, but not so much because I didn't have the resources in order to dive into it correctly. I mean, Radio Shack, rest in peace wasn't really in my neighborhood so i wasn't able to get all the components i needed or scrap for them and so i just had a huge childhood that was involved around every weekend or at least once or twice a week i was making something and i realized not a lot of kids especially but not a lot of people do so what bajika means it means idea and our organization is about ideas and those who create them and that means you all how do we help you bring your ideas to life and so for the past 10 years, I've been doing that through something called product design and development, in which I help people figure out how to use low tech resources, such as cardboard, paper, things you can find in your home, as well as high tech resources, such as things as Tinkercad, which is a computer aided design software or CAD software, or allows us to use computers in order to design things that we wouldn't normally be able to do without decades of mastery. And so that's what my specialty is. And heart of hearts, I'm a nerd through and through. So this is my wheelhouse, as you could tell from the goggles and the gloves. And so what we see for this series is basically us giving you the basics on catting, some tips and tricks. And this is being your time while all of this stuff is happening to just take a break from the world and just sit with us and tinker together. The way these webinars will work is that you'll see at the bottom of your Zoom webinar, it may be different depending on your actual setup if you're connecting via your computer, which I hope you are, or your phone or your iPad or your tablet or what have you, is that you will be able to send us questions and answers and I'll be the only one who's supposed to be able to see it unless I answer it live and I want to share it with everybody. I'm really big on protecting your privacy, so I've asked that if you <laughs> that if you do want to pose a question, like don't call out other people if you know somebody else is participating, don't really use your full name, it's okay. We can all pretend we're secret agents here and use our pseudonyms and all of that jazz. And so just if you have a question on anything I'm going through, just hit the Q&A section. But what I would actually like to ask everybody, just as a quick warm up, while you're getting everything straight and signing into Tinkercad, is what was the last thing you made? If you can hit that Q&A section and let me know, what was the last thing that you personally made? And if you can provide more details, the better, as we give everybody another two to three minutes to hop on or hop off and figure out if this is something they want to do. So let me know. And in the meanwhile, I'll be getting the last thing set up and also being nosy at the responses. Once you submit your question, feel free to go over to your actual right hand panel and you should be able to raise your hand and be like, done, to let me know that you're good. So let's see. Do, do, do. Oh, see, so I have to stop doing that. So another side note is that my organization, Bajika, hosts a show called MLab, and that show you can find on our YouTube channel, but pretty much what it is, is I take pop culture and I remix it into like DIY projects. And so one of the things I discovered on our YouTube channel is that I have a tendency to like hum copyright, copyrighted songs. And YouTube's algorithms are so amazing, they can figure out via 10 to 15 second humming that I do, whether something is the Doug theme song from the early 90s, or if I'm humming like a Deadpool song. And um, I just have to get better about it because unlike your very favorite YouTubers, I don't have pockets like that to try to pay for the actual licensing in order to have permission to hum the Doug theme song. So you'll see me sometimes mute myself when I'm trying to catch myself from muting a copyright song. So if you see that, don't worry. I'm not trying to be all fancy dancy with it. So we see somebody actually made an auto Moblox car with Autodesk Inventor. What is an auto Moblox car? Hold on, 
I'm gonna have to Google that because I have no idea what an Automoblox car is. Hold on, this is my handy dandy Automoblox car. <gasps> Whoa, that is so cool. Oh, wow, you are way more advanced. This is so cool. And you used Inventor for this? Why have I never heard of this? Okay, for I feel like this is big enough to share. So pretty much, I've never seen this before, but this apparently is an Automoblox car, if I'm not mistaken. And this is so cool. So you were able to make this on Autodesk Inventor. For those who don't know, Autodesk Inventor is another CAD software, computer-aided design software from the Autodesk family of software. If that just flew right over your head, don't worry about it. I see some GrabCAD models of an Automoblox car, but that's so cool. Okay, so we have someone who's made an Automoblox car. Okay, a little intimidating even for myself. Let's see what else we have in the Q&A section in terms of things people have made. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Okay, we've seen a couple people who are saying they made a fidget spinner. Okay. Could you mind telling me where you got the fidgets? Well, how you made the fidget spinner? Better question, how you made the fidget spinner. Did you make the fidget spinner using Tinkercad? Did you use Fusion 360? Did you use some other CAD software in order to make the fidget spinner? I know Microsoft now has 3D Paint and some people, unbeknownst to me, have been able to make fidget spinners using 3D Paint. What else have you guys made? Let's see. And don't mind me, I'm literally trying to make sure I'm not missing anybody before I start going through. Okay. Okay. So we have an auto Mobox car, which is something new I didn't even know about. We have fidget spinners. Okay, I see someone said they made a belt buckle. I've not made a belt buckle. I think I'm a little scared to make a belt buckle um, using Tinkercad or Fusion 360. I've made a shoe. Now, this would have been the perfect time to have my shoe that I've made in Fusion 360. But of course, I do not have that on me. Let's see what else. Okay, some people said some sunglasses. I've made a figurine. Hmm. Okay. So I think everyone here has had some really basic experience with CAD software. Could I have people raise your hand if you haven't answered to raise your hand and let me know if you've never used any type of CAD or computer aided design software. Doesn't have to be Tinkercad, doesn't have to be Fusion 360, just so I can keep track of how far or how advanced I need to be. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys a couple more seconds if you need to raise your hand just so I can keep track. Okay. I see some people changing their answer. <laughs> so I'm gonna give you a heads up. Like this is not an actual classroom. So nobody else can see you raise your hand but me. So don't feel like you're scared to raise your hand because you're afraid other people are gonna see you. This is only for me. If you see someone else's question or see someone else's chat, Please let me know that is not supposed to happen. This is supposed to be a safe environment for you. And what I mean by that is just because we're tinkering together doesn't mean you should feel pressure to keep up with someone. The reason we set it up this way is not just to protect your privacy, but also to make sure that you feel comfortable. I mean, what's better than being able to slowly and surely understand how computer-aided design works without feeling the pressure of being in the classroom with your colleagues? But just because we're not doing that doesn't mean we're not here to help each other. So if I ask for certain folks to like slow down, et cetera, the reason why I'm asking is just to make sure we can all move together as a group. There'll be moments I'll allow you all to speed ahead. If you're more advanced, like if you've already did Auto Autodesk Inventor, I'm pretty sure today it's gonna be just a refreshment of your skills. If you've never seen computer-aided design software or never used Tinkercad before, this will be at your pace, so don't worry. 
So I see the hands raised. I'm going to say we're 50-50 on never seen CAD software before to having seen CAD software. For those who have seen computer-aided design software before, um, I have a question. Could you please send me in the Q&A section of this what software that is computer-aided design software you've had experience with, just so I can give you tips and tricks based on your experience level. Okay, I see inventor, okay. Okay, I'm waiting on a couple more answer folks. Remember, it isn't a classroom, but this can be better for you if you just let me know. No one's gonna see your actual answers. This is just for me. I don't have a strict script because I wanna make sure that it's flexible to meet your needs. So I know it's kind of scary and daunting to experience that, but this is for you. So let me know what's your experience level, what software you've had experience with. And I know a couple of people who didn't ha raise their hand need to be sending me a Q&A telling me what software they have experience with. Perfect. Okay, so we have Inventor, which is going to be somewhat similar, but there's going to be a couple things different. I see one person saying Fusion 360 and one person saying Tinkercad. So I'll go ahead and get started. So today is a very light intro day. This is just to show you what software we're using and refresh some skills you probably haven't used in a while. I would say tomorrow we're gonna go a little bit more advanced so everyone's on the same page. So everyone can put their hands down. I got your, I got your information, I got all of it. Ta -ta -ta. So to get started, the software that we're gonna to use today is called Tinkercad. For those who may not know Tinkercad, Tinkercad is a computer-aided design software. If you've ever seen like sci-fi or futuristic reality shows and they're showing you like, this is what this model of the future looks like, or they're like, this is what this slick car looks like. So I'm actually gonna pull up one of my favorite examples. Is the some prototype, blah. can you tell I just had lunch? So this is a Mercedes car model and this is a prototype render of a Mercedes car model that I absolutely adore because uh, I am a Mercedes-Benz fan and some people are like, ah, Mercedes-Benz isn't that cool of a car. Shush, 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 shush. It is not for you to decide. It is for me as a fan. So let me actually share my screen here to show you guys what I'm talking about. Da -da 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 -da. So as you can see here, this is just basically one of the actual um, sketch renders of a new Mercedes Benz called the Vision EQ Silver Arrow. I love looking at these sketches of what an actual car designer is thinking about before it actually debuts as an all electric car at the next SEMA or a car show in Las Vegas or things of that nature. So how do we get from this kind of sketch here in which we don't know exactly if this is what the car is going to look like when it's brought to life to actually seeing someone inside the vehicle with all those cool bumps and curves on it being able to drive an all-electric race car prototype at an electronic show in las vegas and that's computer-aided design software so if we're in tinkercad you'll see something like this and so this is going to be the last time I'm going to ask for like really active participation because I know you guys are probably like, man, we just want to get started actually like doing things. I want to make sure that everyone has their Tinkercad account. Everyone's logged in. If they're seeing a dashboard, ooh, ah, showed you a sneak peek of something. If you see your dashboard, go to create new design because this is where I want you to be. I want you to be at your work plane ready to start creating your first computer-aided design or your first CAD model. So just let me know, and no worries, I'm gonna wait. So just raise your hand when you're at that actual step, so I will know when to start. 
and it's just so beautiful. I wish you could see just the hand raises happening as we're just going down the list and everyone's getting to their work plane. If you wanna be like me and you want your work plane not to have randomly generated letters and names, then just click the title and you can actually edit it that way and then click off when you're done. So we're gonna wait, I wanna see at least 90% hand waves before we move forward. Okay, that's 60%. I want to get up to 80 slash 90. I'm being very flexible on that. So I need a couple of more folks to raise their hand and get over there. If you need help, feel free to ask me a question. That's why I'm here. Also, as I told the younger ones, this is my Hello Kitty water bottle. This is my tried and true water bottle. She's a ride or die. She makes sure that I stay hydrated so I can keep talking. Okay, we're, we're at 80, can we get 90? Can we get 90? Can we get 90, 90? I can't sing, but I like to pretend that I can. So, you know, try them. I want everybody to get to this work plane. If you have a question, feel free to ask. If you're lost somewhere or if you're not able, to get to this part. I wanna see us hit 90. Just get to the work plane. Almost, come on, come on. Okay. Okay, so we're at 90. If you need help getting to this work plane, feel free to send me a private question, but I'm gonna move on. So for those who are able to join us for the early part of the session, this is going to be just a very quick repeat for everyone who wasn't able to join us. I think I recognize a couple of names on this participant list. So feel free to tell me if you were in the earlier morning session because I can actually see your responses. But what I like to start off with is a warm up. So unlike the earlier session, if you want to know why there's an under 13 session and an over 13 session, or what this session is doing differently, what the younger kids are doing in the morning session, we're going to be doing in a shorter amount of time, and then moving on to more advanced skills. So what I thought would be a really cool project to do this Monday, or to kick off our actual webinar session, is to do something that's going to congratulate ourselves, right? And so one of the things that I've been binge watching on YouTube, I don't know if you guys have heard of this, but there's something called Korean home cafes. And so Korean home cafe YouTube videos are basically people who have pretty much nice countertop spaces where they have a photo booth. And all they do is a compilation of making various beverages you can find in a cafe. So for example, you can find, I'm going to see if YouTube's going to be friendly with me this time. So for example, oh, why am I sharing the screen now? Whoop. Yeah, pause. So with the Korean home cafes, let's say you're just sitting there and you're like, you know what? I just want to see people making smoothies. I want to see them making iced coffees. I want to see them making macchiatos. There's a whole YouTube community that does nothing but these 15 minute video compilations. And it may sound silly but they're actually adorable and so right now I'm gonna share my screen the video should be loading like you don't really need to hear the audio but this is kind of a compilation of what these home cafe videos are so pretty much they show you the process of making like iced coffee of brewing like boba tea or boba tea if you're being fancy like how you make tapioca pearls they use these cute containers etc and so one of the things about these korean home cafe videos that i find so soothing especially because we here in boston i don't know where the rest of you are have been at a stay-at-home order for more and more or less about three weeks now is that the containers these drinks and beverages are made out of are so adorable to me and i thought it'll be a really cool warm-up activity for us to actually look and see what unique beverages or container cups that we can actually create using tinkercad in order to warm up our skills and so what i'm going to ask you all to do is take your pen and paper so i'm going to actually be cheating 
because I'm trying to get better about taking notes on my iPad using my Apple Pencil, but you don't have to do this. This is me personally. I'm going to be using my Apple Pencil and iPad. I want you to take your pen and paper, whatever writing utensil you have, and I want you to sketch three designs. I want you to sketch three designs of a unique cup or beverage container that you want to create in Tinkercad. And so I'm going to give you guys five minutes to do so. So don't dwell on it. Don't think too hard on it. Don't try to make it into a whole thing. I'm also going to play the videos to show you some examples to give you some inspiration as background for you to be able to go like, oh, that's a cool idea. Or, oh, I didn't think of this one. Or I didn't think of that one. That actually is really cute. And I'm going for what is something that you, if you ever saw in a Starbucks or what have you, you would immediately go, I will drop all of my money to pay for this cup. So I'm going to share my screen. You guys have five minutes starting now to actually be able, let me see, to actually come up with three designs for a cute cup that you would actually like to bring to life in Tinkercad. Starting now, if you have any questions, just let me know. And also these channels don't just do drinks, they also do food, et cetera. So, you're going to see a lot of weird containers, et cetera. Just focus on what would you make that is inspired by a strawberry, that's inspired by a lemon. Maybe you have it that it's a Disney character. Like, we're not trying to do all copyright infringement. We're just trying to unleash that inner tinkerer right now. This is our Tinker Together session. And if you guys know about inspirational soul cycle or yoga classes, et cetera, yes, I am your inspirational instructor right now. Flex that muscle for me. I want to see your designs. And I'm gonna actually be joining you right now. So right now, I'm going to make it and if you're curious what app I'm using in order to sketch and doing poorly, I'm actually using Autodesk a sketchbook because you can have it on your iPad. And the reason why I really wanted to use my iPad was because I want to get better about sketching on digital surfaces. I'm all right when it comes to pen and paper, but I'm trying to get better with using my digital stuff. And so, Couple more minutes. Ah, and already my sketch has gone left. So while this was like my New Year's resolution to myself, I'm going to be honest, it's been very hard to try to keep up with because I suck so bad with doing digital sketching. So if you're sketching with pen and paper, like don't worry, you are having a more fun time than I am. So let's give it, let's call it one more minute. Ah, 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 no. See, this doesn't make sense because you can't see why I'm making all the weird noises, but trust me, the struggle is real, um, given what the sketch looks like, but it's okay. It's a sketch. It's a sketch. It doesn't have to be perfect. So let's wind it down a little bit. And see, that's another TV show theme song that I am unmistakably quoting 
and need to stop quoting for the sake of my life. Okay. Give me one second. We're going to stop it. So you should be wrapping up your sketch right now. And once you wrap up your sketch, what I'm going to ask you to do is go back to your Tinkercad screen. And we will get started. So raise your hand. Okay, got another question. Raise your hand when you're back on your Tinkercad screen and you have your three choices for a potential cute container to actually bring to life. Okay, I see a couple of people already got their hand raised. Hand raised. Just give me them hands. And I'll actually show you how bad my sketch turned out while I'm waiting on a couple more people. So I don't know if you can see this without the light, but I was trying to draw a strawberry. So if your sketch looks better than this, pat yourself on the back. This was my attempt at a strawberry. As I said, this is something I am working on for myself and I've been catting for over 10 years at this point. And even I know that I need to work on my sketching skills. So this is like my personal year end goal. Okay, I'm gonna have everyone lower their hands just so you don't have to keep going ah, 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 and raise your hands up, you're good. So I want you to take a minute and I want you to figure out which of your three sketches are you the most proud of. The only sketch I was able to come off with was a sketch of a strawberry, a strawberry, but that's the one that I'm gonna spend the most time on because that's the one I think is gonna be downright adorable. I may remix it into like a strawberry shortcake or something of that nature, but what I'm gonna do is focus on making a strawberry container to hold my, let's call the beverage a strawberry smoothie is what I want to have in this container. What you put in your container is your choice. This is just to refresh your skills on Tinkercad. If you already are quite familiar with Tinkercad, then I suggest you use this time to go ahead. If I say something, a tip or a trick that I think you need to pay attention to, then I'll go, this is an important tip. When you hear that, feel free to look up and pay attention to this actual Zoom webinar to see the tip or trick that I'm actually showcasing. If you feel like you can blaze through this part and this is just to warm up your CAD muscle, then feel free to do so. If this is your first time in Tinkercad, I'm going to show you the basic tips and tricks you need in order to bring your ideas to life using the software. Ready to get started, guys? I need a show of hands because I'm going to make sure that you are active in this and that I am making sure I leave no man, woman, or child behind in this webinar. Also, if I'm being too much, just let me know. As I said before, the Q&A is anonymous. So if you feel my energy level is at a 10 and I need to bring it down to a seven so you can keep up, or just so you're like not trying to claw my face through your actual webinar screen, then just let me know. Okay, we have a couple of people getting ready. Lower hands, thank you kindly, much obliged. And let's get started. Do, 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 do. So in order to make my strawberry, I have to first think, what shape is gonna make my strawberry? So every shape in nature is the sum or the subtraction of other shapes. And what I mean by this is, think of any shape you can think of. Like let's say a star. You can make a star if you actually cut out triangular holes from a star. And I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. So here, we have a square box, right? I can manipulate this square box by clicking it and dragging it onto my work plane. And I can make this square box double the height, if I so choose, to make it taller. So for example, I'm gonna do Control C, Control V. Don't try to copy me, this is just to illustrate an example. If I wanted to make a weird duck, I can click these two. I can group them together. And I made a new shape. Now, if I wanted to make a different shape, I can go over here to my basic shapes. And this is just showing you what basic shapes are so important in this software. I don't want to do a roof because uh, I want to be extra, but I guess I'm doing a roof. I can bring over another basic shape, tilt it, and I'm going to make the basic shape align in terms of size 
with the actual duckling, we're gonna call it the duckling from earlier. I'm gonna rotate it. And this is not for you to repeat, this is just me making a point. So do not stress, do not panic, do not try to copy what I'm doing. Just pay attention if this is your first time using Tinkercad because I'm just showing a couple of cool features this can do and how you can make unique shapes by combining, combining or subtracting other shapes. So here, I'm just gonna add this shape over here and I'm gonna be a little extra because that's what I do. That's my, well, I don't think it's my middle name because my middle name is Azealia, but that's what we're gonna be recognized for. So I'm gonna move that in to the shape here. And remember when I said every shape is the addition or subtraction of another shape? So I'm gonna use this shape to subtract from the main shape here. And so I'm gonna do that by turning this triangle or this roof into a hole. And then I'm gonna expand my hole all the way to this edge here. And then I'm gonna select group together some holes, and voila. I've made a very unique shape that I wouldn't have originally have selected. I made this very unique shape by adding and subtracting various shapes in order to make this one. Once you understand this is the principle behind almost every shape in nature or that you can come up with, whether it's you adding and subtracting one or two shapes or adding and subtracting dozens of shapes, then you understand how Tinkercad works. Now Tinkercad is what we call a basic CAD software. We're going to be exploring some other CAD software throughout this webinar that is going to allow for you to make those cool curves that you saw in that Mercedes prototype of the Silver Arrow, the all-electric car prototype, and some other cool things to make curves and shapes. But I digress. If you're following along with me, I'm going to be trying to make a strawberry. Feel free to make any one of your three designs, but I would highly recommend trying to replicate my design first and then creating your own when we go into free time. And free time will happen up until three o'clock, East Coast time or 12 o'clock Pacific time. So in order to make my strawberry, I need a base. So I'm gonna look over here at my basic shapes and I'm gonna start wondering, hmm, what do we consider to be a basic shape for the bottom of a strawberry that I can see over here in basic shapes? Hmm. Anybody have a thought or a suggestion? What over here in basic shapes, please tell me in Q&A that you think we should use as the basis for our strawberry container. And when I say strawberry container, it doesn't necessarily have to be a container that is shaped like a strawberry. Like I said, it could be a strawberry shortcake, it could be a strawberry milkshake container, even though that's kind of basic. What could we use as the base for our strawberry? Send me your Q&A if you're following along with us. If you're doing your own thing, don't fear. Hmm, I see someone mention a paraboloid bottom with a star top. So for those who don't know what a paraboloid is, it's this bad boy right here. So let's bring that one to the main shape and a star top. But see, here's the dilemma. There's two basic shapes that are recognized as stars. There's this one, which I consider to be like the sailor moon star. And then there's the other one, which is what you consider to be like the star you get back in kindergarten when you had perfect attendance or perfect behavior. So which one do we think looks like a strawberry? Is it A, the blue star, or B, the yellow star? Decisions, decisions. Which one do we think we want to play around with? And for example, I want you to think, what does a strawberry look like? Do we want to include those little green leaf things on the top? What do we want this to look like? I'm going to say for me personally, I think mm, I like I like the Sailor Moon star. And for those who don't know Sailor Moon, it was an uh, anime that was really popular in the 90s into the early 2000s that played on Cartoon Network if you're stateside. And it's one of my favorite childhood animes along with Dragon Ball Z and Gundam, which are like the three classics in my opinion. And they kind of ushered in Naruto, et cetera. So that's your little millennial fact when millennials <laughs> like myself mentioned that. A heart, that's a good one. 
So we also have an idea about using this heart basic shape in order to make our strawberry container. What else are the containers that we can use in order to make our strawberry inspired container? We have a paraboloid bottom with a star top and we have a heart. And I'm basically gonna turn these and in the way in order for you to be able to kind of see what I think the suggestions we're trying to imagine in their mind. So just to show you a quick tip for those who are tinkering on their own, when you select a shape, you can zoom in to that shape by selecting it and going to your left hand side and looking for that little zoom figure in order to zoom in directly on the shape. This is really helpful when you have a lot of basic shapes on your work plane. So here I use that feature to zoom in dead on that heart. Do we want our heart to be red? No. We want it to be the color of love, of strawberry. It's probably really bright, but let's see. You see right here, there's some arrows, right? excuse me, as you saw earlier, I used those arrows to rotate this figure. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to click and I can rotate it 90 degrees this way or click, click the number and type 90 degrees directly. Then I can rotate this. And for me, I want this heart to look more like a strawberry, so I'm gonna tilt it on its side a little bit so it's resting on its side like a strawberry resting on a table. So I'm gonna look for that double arrow again, pull up my mouse, and move slightly to the side at 45 degrees. And then I'm gonna click this black triangle up here to raise it up onto the work plane. Now, 45 degrees seems like I may have raised it a little bit too much, but that's okay. I'm gonna let it go for right now. I'm gonna click the home button on my left-hand side to readjust my view. And you see here that I have my strawberry. And now I can make it wide or more narrow depending on how I feel. In terms of the paraboloid, I can do the same thing. I can zoom in with this feature and I can rotate and rotate it 180 degrees because I want it completely upside down like this, right? So once I have a 180, I'm also going to change its color to mimic more of an actual strawberry. And because I have it this way, I'm going to do something which is change my camera view. Changing my camera view is when we change this little floating box here in order to change our perspective. So you see here, I can click the box and rotate in order to see different perspectives on my actual paraboloid. But the pr actual perspective I want now is that front perspective of my strawberry. So here I have my strawberry inspired container and then we have our star. Now our star is supposed to be the top of our strawberry and typically that's green. Now I'm not going to make it like the darkest of dark green even though she, oh whoa, no, she look cute, she look cute. Maybe I actually will do it the darkest of dark green. But now we have a problem. Ah, well, we have another problem. So the problem here that we have is that this star is bigger than our paraboloid. So if I was to use the black triangle again, which raises our shape off the work plane, if I was to use this black triangle again and raise it up, and I wanna raise it to the same height as my strawberry. So a trick on this is you're gonna click the strawberry, click the height, and you'll notice it's 20 something, right? But wait. Woo, 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 woo. We need a backup. Backup. What is the 20 something? Is that inches? Is that millimeters? What is that 20 something? Well, that 20 something will be known if you look at your lower right hand side. So if you look at your lower right hand side, you'll see something that says snap grid. When you see snap grid, it's going to tell you what each of these little squares you see on the work plane what actually is their dimension? So what is the width of each square? If the width of the square says one millimeter, you know your work plane's in millimeters. So let's take a step back for a second. 20 millimeters is the height of this paraboloid, but I don't want this to be in millimeters because I live in the US. If you're not in the US, don't worry. But I live in the US and I want this to be in inches. So what I'm gonna do is change my work plane or my work environment to be in inches because it's easier for me to visualize it. So here, I'm gonna go to units, 
go down to inches. That changes everything in all your units to inches. Now here, you have your width and length, right? I like to treat, try to keep it to things I mentally can compute. So I'm used to dealing with rulers all day. So I want my length and width to be 12 inches. So when I'm designing and I'm trying to go, I, gotta, I want to visualize like how big is my actual CAD model. I know that it's 12 inches by 12 inches. So I know it's not bigger than a ruler. And I know that it's gonna fit within a certain amount of space. Now, if you're gonna send this CAD model, as some of you who have more experience know, you can use Tinkercad to send your CAD models to 3D printers. If you're gonna send it to 3D printers, I would suggest not creating your own custom dimensions for your work plane, but using some of these presets here for your actual 3D printer. But most of us aren't 3D printing today, so just go ahead and make it 12 inches by 12 inches or something that you can visualize. And you see how my work plane is different now? It's been updated, and instead of showing 20 millimeters, the height of this is showing 0 0.787 inches. Now, I don't know about you, even though my background is engineering, I'm not really big, I'm not a real big fan of um, three digits in my numbers and measurements, unless I'm actually modeling something in real life. So I like to keep things simple. So instead of making it 0 0.787 inches, I want my height of my strawberry to be one inch. For context, if you're looking to see one inch, what it looks like, it's about this much. So it's about half your thumb. If we were actually making this into a beverage container, you would actually want it to be a little taller. So for example, I have my trusty thermos here that I've been using to drink my iced coffee. I'm gonna take my measure and it's about, let's see. This is what happens when you're trying to do too much at one time. So taking my trusty measuring tape, it's about seven inches, if you can see. It's about seven inches is the height of my container. So if I wanted to make this more realistic, I will make it seven inches is the height of the strawberry. So feel free to take that information if you're making your own container. But for right now, I'm just gonna make mine's one inch and I'm gonna make the width. The width of my typical container is about doo -doo 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 -doo. inspector. Oh, nope, that's another theme song. I'm about to see, I'm about to do copyright infringement all over again. Okay, this here. See, when you're doing it live, that's when things don't work. So the width of my actual thermos is about three inches. So since I divided the actual height by a seventh, I can divide it by a seventh for the width, but I'm being lazy. And I'm gonna say I just want my width to be about uh, 0 0.5 inches. I'm gonna use the tab special. I said the tab special, like I just said a drink special, but no, not the tab soda, but use the tab key in order to tab from one width by making it 0 0.5, Selecting the key tab to make the second one 0 0.5. Oh heck, do you think we should actually just make this full size instead of playing around with it being small? Can I see a show of hands? Do we wanna just go ahead and make this a full size beverage? Oh wow, okay, okay, I, I see, I see the hands raised. Okay, we'll just go ahead and make this full size. So I'm gonna go here and I think I said that the height was seven inches, correct? So let's go ahead and make this seven inches. We're gonna make this realistic based on everyone's feedback. And we said the width of my actual thermos cup, which I'm using to model, was three inches by three inches. So now we have to zoom out because that's what our beverage looks like. So I'm gonna tilt it just a little bit. Now, the reason we started this whole journey was because we wanted to get our little strawberry leaf top on the top of our beverage container. Now there's two ways we can go about this. We can actually make a lid that actually has the strawberry top on top of it that sits neatly on top of our cup. Or we could just make this as a cover. The choice is yours. So if everyone in the Q&A section tell me, I'm gonna show that in a bit. In the Q&A section, show me if you wanna do a lid with the actual leaf who's following along, or do you want the leaf to fit firmly on top of the cup? If that doesn't make sense, I could just show both if you guys are all in willing. Remember, this is all about showing you guys 
not really about my ego. I keep thinking Inspector Gadget, I gotta stop. While I'm waiting on everyone to give me their feedback, I'm going to zoom out for a second. So one of the questions I just received was how do you copy and paste things? So if you're already far ahead and you're stuck on that part, pay attention. This is my tip. Select the actual shape. You have four ways you can do this. The first way is using a keyboard shortcut, which is just using your keyboard in order to duplicate the shape. So you'll do control C and then control V if you're on a PC. If you're on a Mac, then use the Mac equivalent of copy and paste. And as you see here, I just made a duplicate. I'm gonna delete that one. I'm gonna show you the second way. The second way to do this is to click the shape, go over to your far left side, click copy, and then click manually paste, which is the clipboard, in order to create your duplicate. If that doesn't work, there's a third option for you. The third option is to again select the shape and go over to the duplicate and repeat tool. Now this tool is especially helpful if you have something at an angle that you want to replicate the angle. If that just went right over your head right now, don't worry. It's going to be more important later this week when we do some fun things with it. But for right now, we're going to keep it simple. We can click duplicate and repeat and voila, there's a second one right here. And then last but surely not least, you can just do on your keyboard, control D, and that also will create a copy of that model for you. So hopefully one of those four ways is actually helpful in helping you copy your shape. Now let's see if we're gonna do the leaf on top, etc. So it looks like the leaf on top is winning. I'm gonna answer one final question and we'll do the leaf on top. So for those who sped ahead and are having trouble with measurements, what I would suggest you do is click your shape. When you click your shape, you'll see there's these little white squares. When you click the square, it holds your measurement for that square you clicked. So for example, the square I clicked was the height of my cone. So I clicked this here, it turned red, which meant it acknowledged that I clicked it. And when I click it, it lets me know what the height is. If you're trying to get length and width down, for the paraboloid, the length and width is the length and width based on the circle, not exactly the cone. The cone is dependent on height. So here, I'm gonna go down here. I'm gonna click and it turns red, which is a temporary lock. And you see it's three inches. Tab, I can go to the other measurement and do three inches. If you don't want to use the tab key, then click the square and then click the actual number you want to change. And then click off or press enter when you're done and then click off to disable displaying those measurements. So that would allow for you to make sure that you have your measurements on deck. If you want to remember what we actually, I'm gonna see if I can post. We've said that the height of this little mug right here that I'm using, this is my Starbucks rose gold mug, the height of it was seven inches. And the actual length and width, because it's a circle, the length and the width of my circle is the same, which means I can just put equal sign there. And I just said it was, did I say it was three inches? Why am I saying 3.5? See, you guys are supposed to be correcting me. It is three inches. So I'm gonna keep that there. So regardless of what we're talking about, you all can see those are the measurements for this cup. So when you're making your real life version, you know how to keep it within that number. And this here is pretty standard. My Hello Kitty is about nine to 10 inches. So just keep that in mind. But this is a pretty big thermos. Like this one covers up a good portion of my arm. While this one is the portable one that I could take like on the train, if I'm like riding my bike or doing stuff, this is the one I typically reach for. And this one I believe carries about it carries 12 fluid ounces. So this is a 12 fluid ounce container and I'm gonna add that to the notes. For those who are going ahead, you have that there. So let's get started on the cap, shall we? Perfecto. So first things first, we have our leaf here. Oh, wait, ah, ah, stop, 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 stop. I got it, stop. Okay, so we want a cap for our actual 
container, right? So instead of using the star for the cap, everyone wanted to do a top with the leaf on top. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna spring for my cylinder basic shape. So I'm gonna bring my cylinder basic shape here. Now this, this tall strawberry is kind of intimidating. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna hide it. So here you see in my little toolbar area, I'm gonna use that little light bulb to hide that strawberry. Anytime I want my strawberry container to come back, I'm gonna press that light bulb to bring it back up. This is a helpful hint for anybody who's doing very complicated shapes or their work plane just has too much going on. You can use this in order to hide things so you're able to better focus on what you're actively designing right then and then add it on later by clicking the light bulb. So here, I'm gonna click my shape. I'm gonna get my life together by clicking home and then I'm gonna click focus or my fitted selected view. So here, we know that the lid of my container is three inches by three inches. So I'm gonna start by making sure that that falls in line. So this here is gonna be three inches. I'm gonna hit tab, ah! gonna hit tab. And then here, we're gonna make it three inches, right? So the height, so let's whip out my trusty measuring tape. If you have calipers because you're fancy, this will probably be a better job for calipers, but I'm trying to keep it basic. So you can use your ruler. I love my measuring tape because it loves me because we've been together for a very long time. And yes, I talk about my tools like they're my best friends because they're there for me. I don't need to go into my personal life. But besides that point, I'm going to say that my lid is about a quarter of an inch. So it's not going to be an inch because that's a very thick lid. I mean, my Hello Kitty bottle is about an inch, but I'm not trying to go for that thick of a lid. So let's go ahead and go with a quarter of an inch. So when we go into height, we're gonna do it from one inch. We're gonna bring that bad boy down to 0 0.25 inches. And this is gonna be the top of it. So now that we have our top, we can now start to get the dimensions for our star. So as you can see here, if we change our camera perspective by looking at the left-hand side, this is kind of off our work plane a bit. So we want to bring this bad boy back down to the level that it can move its way onto our top. So if we know that our top's thickness is a quarter of an inch, we want to make the height that this is off the work plane. I'm going to zoom in there for you. We don't want it to be five eighths an inch. We want it to be a quarter of an inch as well. So I'm going to change this to a quarter of an inch. So that's 0 0.25 inches is how far I want my star off the work plane, which will be the same height of my actual top from the work plane. If I change my camera perspective by going over to my trusty cube, I can slowly move this over and I can see that she, she meshing, she meshing pretty well. But I'm a stickler. As I told this morning's group, I'm one of those people, I wouldn't call myself OCD, I'll just call myself particular or perfectionist, and that I like my stuff to be organized and aligned. So when I'm looking at my Tinkercad models, one of the challenges I have is that when I'm catting, I need stuff to be aligned. I need it to look good from this angle, and I need it to look good from this angle, which it doesn't, and I need it to look good from this angle. And when I'm doing this, it's very, very, very hard to look at it and know it's not aligned. So what I'm gonna do is use my favorite tool in all of Tinkercad, which is the Align tool. So I'm gonna click here, and this is how you can select more than one shape. I'm gonna click off on the work plane and drag my mouse across all the shapes on the work plane. So that way I have both the star and the top included. I'm gonna go over to the actual corner here, and I'm gonna click Align, and I'm gonna align down the middle and down the center. The reason I really love this align tool, like let's say for example, I wanted to make it align towards the front. If you see here, there's a really faint orange outline that shows up when you wave your mouse around the lower dot. That's kind of what I like to call the future projection tool. It allows for you to see what your future will be if you decided to choose to align to that. If you decide that is not the alliance you want to strike, then go for the one that you want. If you don't like the back, Try the center, keep it moving. I'm gonna say for here, let's check our camera angles. So I'm gonna use my cube on the left-hand side and I'm gonna 
rotate, rotate, ro ro rotate. And it looks like she's pretty good. But the problem I'm having with this, if you know the TV show Dragon Ball Z, this looks like a very flat Dragon Ball that has been transformed into a coin. This is not really what I'm really thinking of when I'm thinking of a strawberry top. So what I'm gonna do is click this actual shape and I'm gonna increase the size. So I'm gonna increase the size to make sure it reaches each corner of my actual top. And so when I'm increasing the size, I want it to be three inches because that's the dimensions of my top by three inches. But all that beautiful alignment we just did just went out the window. So what do I need to do? Align again, simple, easy peasy. We're gonna make sure we know these tools. So we're gonna click the star and I'm gonna show you another way to align. So when you click the star, use your finger, press down on the shift key, and that allows you to select other objects you want to align. So I'm gonna to select the top again, go to my align tool, and I'm gonna line down the middle, and then I'm gonna line down the middle here. And I'm seeing it, it looks kind of aligned. Let me double check my camera angle. Yeah, it's kind of aligned. Whoop, I don't know what I just did there. I accidentally did something that I wasn't supposed to do. So it looks aligned, but... <sighs> I could do a little better. So let me change my view. Let me change the actual dimensions here. So it's saying it's three by three inches, but it doesn't feel three by three inches. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that this is a five pointed star. So you can tweak and do whatever you need, but it's technically aligned. Personally, I'm gonna make this a little bigger. I'm actually gonna make this 3.5 by 3.5, just to make sure I cover the top. So 3.5 by 3.5 inches. I'm gonna align once more. The more you get the hang of the align tool, the more you realize it's like a saving grace for those like me who are always just, just adjusting all the time. You see that little double arrow there? See, I'm not even following my own rule. You see that little double arrow right there? I'm gonna use that to slightly rotate my star just a tad, just to make it easier on me to realize that it's aligned. And then here, I'm gonna make sure it's all good to align once more. One more time. There we go. Now that looks a little bit more what I was thinking, right? So here, I'm gonna change this bottom disc and I'm gonna change it to red. And then I'm gonna tilt. And I think that's a pretty good top. Now, one of my pet peeves is that if I look at the camera angle from the top here, I think I want this little stem part to be just a little bit more inward, just a little bit more. So I'm gonna play around with the radius. So in order to do that, I'm gonna need to remove some of my notes here. And I'm gonna play around with this tool here, which is the five points. And I could have it have multiple star points if I wanted to. So this is why I also like this particular basic shape. I can change the radius on it a little bit if I want to make it look more like a strawberry. I think this is starting to become dangerously close to a tomato. So I'm just playing around with it a little bit more. And then I'm going to select all, make sure it's aligned again. I'm going to align it here. There we go. And then Final thing we need to do for our top is we're gonna select drag all and we're gonna group it. What grouping does is it takes the actual top or the actual top shape of the leaves and the actual container top and makes it one object. So this allows for us to move it around the board as one piece or around our work plane as one piece. But um, yeah, there's a problem. You see, when I made it a group, one of the things you can notice is that it turned the whole thing into one color and that's not what i want so basically in order to make it the two separate colors like we had before you need to go into your shape toolbar click multicolor, and that would allow for you to continue moving this and let it get act as one while it keeping its separate colors 
Now that we have our top, let's bring back our container and let's zoom out a bit and let's look at her from the side. So I'm going to rotate my camera angle slightly. Now, we said that our container was a height of seven inches, right? And so we need to raise our new leaf or strawberry top seven inches. So we're going to click the black triangle right here for our top. And we're going to increase this height, which is here. And we're going to go ahead and calculate that or put that in at seven point inches. We're going to zoom out. And then this is where the Align Tools magic comes into its full potential. While we still have this top selected, hit your shift key and select the actual base container. And you're going to click Align. And you're going to align those two down this one. Rotate that camera angle and align here. And you have your strawberry container. Now, I like to push us a little bit. So we have our strawberry container, but there's one thing that's missing. So let's click this here and use our light bulb in order to have it disappear. How are we going to put stuff in it if it's a solid container? So remember that feature I showed you earlier about all shapes are the addition and the subtraction of other shapes? What I want you to do by yourselves for the next four minutes is I want you to figure out how would you make that container an actual container you could put some liquid in. So I'm gonna give you guys until 310 or 1210 if you're on the West Coast in order to do so for the next four minutes. Get started. Also, while you're doing that, feel free to ask me questions in the Q&A part. Don't feel like you're on your own own. Like this is just for you to have some free time to explore the software and get a feel for it on your own.
give you guys a couple more seconds before it turns into 310 slash 1210, depending on your coast. How would you make this the empty part of the container? And also, I drink a lot of liquids, so this project is pretty close to my heart because I love unique beverage containers. So raise your hand if you already have something you feel comfortable with. Don't worry. If you don't have it yet, I'm going to show you what I do or how I would do it. Okay, I see a couple of hands raised. I'm gonna give you guys one extra minute. So I wanna make sure we're doing this all together. So I'm gonna show you what mine looks like while we're waiting on the last couple of people. So I'm gonna just make this disappear and this disappear. Make that disappear. And I'm gonna move this. So I'm gonna select both objects to the center, change my perspective. So a little too big, but that's okay. Okay, so this is my strawberry. I think I got everyone's question. Yes, I did. So this is my strawberry, right? So when you're thinking about a container, there's multiple parts. Ah, I tied this on too tightly. But pretty much, you have your top that actually can screw in or you can just slap on. And then you have the empty part that is where the deliciousness of your beverage goes in, right? So for this one, we're not going to have threading. And what threading is, is this part here. It's the part that allows for you to screw on the top to your beverage. We're not going to do threading, but if you want to do it, I'm going to show you a little bit later on how to actually do it. This is a simple top that fits on a container, pretty much like your jars or what have you. And not like a mason jar, but like a regular jar with a top on it is the design that I did. So here, I'm gonna move this off to the side. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, that's another song. But pretty much I'm gonna move my top over to the side and you can see I have a hole here, right? So the way that I did the hole is that I tilted this here and you can see there's a cavity or a hole that's displayed there. The way I created my hole was pretty simple. So let's move this over here and I'm gonna duplicate it and bring it here. I'm gonna show you how I actually brought this to life. So remember that I said that our actual container is based off of my Starbucks container and the height was seven inches with the width and the length of the actual container, so across and down, was three inches. What I did here, and I'm gonna show you because I'm gonna ungroup, is I created a duplicate paraboloid that I transformed into a hole. So here, I'm gonna delete. I'm gonna show you from scratch how I did it. So I took my paraboloid and I did the copy and the paste feature in order to make two. And because I don't like two colors meshing there, I moved mine to the side. Now I'm gonna make this green so it's just more obvious that this is gonna be the one that we transform and to the hole that cuts into the original container. So the height of this one, like we said before, is seven inches and the width and length is three inches. So what I'm gonna do here is that when you cut a hole, I don't want the hole to cut this entirely. What I mean by that is, the reason why I have to edit dimensions is if I make this into a hole and then I clicked the original container and aligned both together, as I do here, ah, the technology gods do not like me. Ah! Okay, if I align them together and I group, the whole thing kind of disappears, right? Because it's cutting its own self, which is great if you just want a cool way to do that party trick, but that's not what we want to do. So I'm gonna go back to the shape. I'm gonna make it a solid so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna try to change the dimensions so it only cuts out a small part. Because as you can tell, there's still a bottom to your cup and there's still a thickness wall to your container. 
So my thickness wall, I don't want to be too thick. So I've decided that I'm going to make my paraboloid just about a quarter of an inch on each side. So in order to take a quarter of an inch on each side, that's 0 0.25 plus 0 0.25. And I just want to make sure we're all following that math because this is where it gets funky. So let's go here. And if I want 0 0.25 on this side and 0 0.25 on this side, it's 0 0.25 plus 0 0.25, which is 0 0.5 inches. If I need to take 0 0.5 inches off from something that's three inches by three inches, so three minus 0 0.5, and I'm gonna be fancy, minus 0 0.5, is 2.50 inches across in length. So I already know now that I need to make the width and length of this 2.5. Tab, 2.5, boom. Next up is the height. If I want the actual bottom of my actual container to have that little bottom that's gonna hold my beverage upright, then I need to subtract some from the actual height of my duplicate that I'm gonna later turn into the hole. So this right now is seven inches. Just because I want enough that's gonna hold the beverage and give some weight to it, because as we can see here, it's very top heavy, the design. So I wanna add as much weight as possible to the bottom of it so my drink doesn't go timber down and just spill all over my table and just destroy everything. So I'm gonna actually make my bottom thick. I'm gonna make it 0 0.5 inches thick, like thick, like a milkshake thick. So I'm gonna cut 6.5 inches. Why am I cutting 6.5 inches? Because seven inches minus 0 0.5 inches is 6.5 inches. And I'm gonna keep the math over here. So don't feel like you have to do it in your head. I know math isn't everyone's strong suit, but here we're gonna make you comfortable with math. So seven inches minus 0 0.5 inches equals 6.5 inches. And that's why we're going to have that as our height. So here, we have 6.5 inches, and we have 2.5 by 2.5. We're going to translate this into a hole, and we're going to use our align tool to do the dirty work for us. So here on the align tool, we're going to click the basic shape that we had earlier, and we're going to align it based down the middle, and then we're going to do it this way. Now the problem is, ding, 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 is that the hole is stuck inside that container. Now when we look at our beverage containers, the part that we want the hole to show up is the top, right? If we look at the bottom, the bottom is solid. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the Mac Magic Future tool and showcase what my future will look like if I align both of those para para uh, paraboloids up at the top. When I look at that future tool, I see both of them show up. When I center it in the middle, I don't see them, right? So let's go with the top. And voila, we can see that hole peeking through, right? But we gotta make this real. So we again, I'm gonna drag and drop or select both shapes. Whoop, accidentally selected a shape. If you so accidentally select a shape that you don't want, press the shift key again and select the shape that you don't want to be selected and it should be back to normal. If you're not sure, here's two little tips to make sure. Zoom in on the shape that you like or you actually wanted to select, and you should see a little thin blue outline on that shape. On top of that, if you look over at your toolbar on the right-hand side, you'll see shapes and the number of shapes that you actually wanted to select. Once you do that and you have the number of shapes you want, which was two, you press group, and you see that your hole was created. The last part for making our top is something I wasn't really honest about. So if we look here, I'm going to zoom in there. You can see that I added a little something to that top, right? And the reason I added that little something to the top is I wanted, whoop, sorry about that camera angle. That was me. That was me, folks. That was me. Is I wanted when you actually put the top on, I wanted for you to be able I wanted you to be able to have this part here fit snugly inside the actual cap. So what you have is a press fit. When I mean a press fit, I mean something that just fits in perfectly like such. So you're gonna see me show here. 
And you see when I zoom in right there, how it fits in perfectly, it's because this part, I can raise up and it fits snugly right inside. Now the way I did this was that I took the cylinder, just like we did for the top, and I made a cylinder based on the new dimensions of the hole. So the new dimensions were 2.5 inches by 2.5 inches. I kept it the same thickness as this top layer because I didn't want it to be double thick. I felt 0.5 inches was enough. So I kept it the same thickness, aligned, grouped, and then made it so it was able to fit snugly right on top. So that was our strawberry container inspired by Korean home cafes. So this was what I call a quick warm up of getting naked. See, now I'm getting tongue tied because I'm so excited how cute it turned out. Huh. This was our warm up just to refresh our Tinkercad skills. Or if this is your first time using Tinkercad, being able to understand all the things this software can do. So this will be my time to add you guys, ask, allow you, why can I talk today? So this is my time to ask you all to finish up your actual Tinkercad CAD models based on your sketch and ask me questions if you're running into problems with your own CAD model. Um, I had a couple of questions that were asked to me. One of them is how did I add the text boxes? So the text boxes aren't something you can add in Tinkercad. I'm using something called the Zoom webinar, which is a software that allows for me to communicate with you all live. And so that's how I was able to add the text boxes. So I'm able to like erase, spotlight things, make things disappear, etc. in order to help, help me teach you all. So one of the things that I love about Zoom is that I can actually like spotlight stuff and put like a spotlight on. This here is what I'm talking about. Like, don't you see this here? Don't you see where my little mouse is? I put a little spotlight on it and things like that. So it can draw your attention to make sure you know exactly what my mouse is doing without having to like squint into the actual camera or on your computer screen. If you're talking about adding text to your CAD models, then you go onto your right hand side on your toolbar and you'll see this bad boy right here. So you'll see text, drop that bad boy there and you can actually lower the toolbar and you can add your own custom text. So for example, I can add my organization name, Bajika. Da, 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 da. I don't know why the cat lock is on, but it's okay. And I can change the height. I can give us some smoothness or what have you. Oh, what did I do? What did I do? Oh, there we go. So I can give us some smoothness and things of that nature to actually add. Matter of fact, I'm gonna show you guys a cool trick. So one of the things that you can do in Tinkercad is change your work plane. So if you don't want your work plane here and you wanna add, let's say some text right down the middle of our strawberry container, you can press the W key on your keyboard and you will see this little orange or blue tile show up here. Dead center, I'm gonna add that work plane there. I'm gonna go over to my basic shapes and I'm gonna add the text that I want to add, which is my company name. Bajika, Bajika. I don't know why I said it like Pikachu, but we're gonna roll with it. And because I want this down the length of the actual container, I'm gonna rotate it to make it 90 degrees. And I'm actually gonna shrink it to make it a little bit better. So here, here, here. I'm gonna press fitted screen. I'm gonna change my height here to five and see how that looks. I'm gonna tilt my camera angle, see how she's looking. She's looking pretty cute. I'm gonna increase her height a little bit more. I want her in the container. So you see how the difference? I'm actually using the height and bringing her in because this work plane allows me to do that. Now I have to be careful because I don't want it going all the way into the cup because if I extrude it all the way through, it will come through the other side. So I want to make sure I stay within that one half, that half an inch that I've left as the lip for this part of my cup. So I'm going to turn that bad boy around. I'm going to remove myself. I, I think I'm going to... I think she could be slightly smaller, so I'm just gonna make her slightly smaller here. 
make sure she's still aligned. And when I'm done, I'm gonna press the W key again. You'll see that little, that little square pop up again. And I'm gonna move the square back where you see the faint outline of what my previous work plane was. Click there and then boom. I'm gonna click, I'm gonna click my actual container. Don't forget to group because it's still a separate thing until you group and have her blend in to my container. Oh, no, I don't want her that color. No, 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 I don't want her that color. I made that mistake, that was my fault, that was my fault. If you wanted to keep it two separate colors, remember what we did before, we clicked multicolor, and there you go. This is Bajika's container. This is her strawberry container. And feel free to use that work plane trick if you want to add like seeds onto your actual container if you're doing strawberry or what have you. But it's one of those neat tricks that adds a little bit of personalization as well as making this more your actual design than what you can do basically with Tinkercad. I see we have some other questions. So when you're working with Tinkercad, your projects will automatically save. So what you'll notice is that sometimes when you're working, you'll see progress saved or saved. It's because Tinkercad is a browser-based software, which means it, it actually will allow for you to save constantly. So you don't have to worry about if you're going to lose stuff. Now, do things happen? Of course they do. But you just have to keep in mind that your stuff will be constantly saved. Now, if you want to share your project with other people, you can always feel free to click the send to button, which is what we're going to do in a little bit. And you can actually download a screenshot of your file. If you want to actually share the actual CAD or computer aided design model, what you can do is go to export. And for those who are familiar, you can export it as an OBJ or an STL file. If you want my personal opinion, for those who are more advanced, I would always export it as an STL file. If this is just for you tinkering or just you just getting experience working with CAD software, I don't think you should be working with OBJ files yet, unless you're doing higher level CAD file. And we'll be exploring all these file formats this week. So you will have a pretty good, I would say a really good feel for all of them at the end of this. Whoop, I just saw another question come in. So I will say this here, if you're looking at whether or not to debate if you want to do this class or want to do our early morning class, I will say that the early morning class, even though it says 13 and under, that doesn't mean it's just for kids. The 13 and under is just because of, I'm going to be frank, legal reasons. I can't show you certain tools on the 13 and under session because you have to be over 13 to use that software. So if you're starting from basic basics and you feel this was a lot, then feel free to jump in on the morning session, which is 11 a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern time, or if I'm doing my math right, yes, 8 a.m. to 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific time. And that time zone is going to be more like beginners and projects that is focused more on step by step. This one is assuming that you are older and you want to like dive in. I would say if you feel comfortable with Tinkercad after a couple of moments with the early morning session and you want to join into this one, feel free. If you need extra help, this Q&A button is there for a reason. Sometimes if I don't get feedback, I think everyone's on the same page. And then I get a message that's like, oh, yeah, I've been lost for the last 15 minutes. Don't do that to yourself. The reason we're doing these webinars is to tinker together. And that means leaving no man, woman, child, dog, cat behind. Well. I mean, leave, I, uh, am I gonna leave a dog or a cat behind? Yeah, I'll, I'll leave them alive behind on Tinkercad. I don't know if I want a dog to know Tinkercad just yet. But besides the point, if you have questions, feel free to ask. If you wanna try the morning session, feel free. This is just to get you a little bit more experience. So do we have any other questions before we start brainstorming the next project? Do, 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 do. Okay, I see some people typing. I'm gonna let it go. I'm also gonna clean up my workspace because I'm a stickler for, I want this to look pretty. I need this to look pretty and clean. So I got this here and I'm gonna zoom into my home. Whoop, 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 whoop. Okay, calm down, calm down, calm down. You're doing too much, you're doing too much. As you can tell, doesn't matter how long you've been working with Tinkercad, sometimes, some, sometimes she, she can try you, but it's okay. It's okay. 
So, okay, we have another question coming in. So we will be doing a project every day. So the goal of this session is to make sure that you have an hour or two every day to actually focus on working on a project that you are passionate about or making your own spin on the project we select. So today was just a warm up day just to get you familiar with the software and to get more comfortable with what we're gonna be actually doing the rest of the week. So like I said, this session may end a little bit early because I want you to have a little bit of time to brainstorm and preparation for tomorrow's session. If you forget to do the homework, don't worry about it. I mean, let's, let's be real. This isn't really school. So I'm going to make sure you have time to do whatever you need to do. But this one was just a review. And for those whose first time, it's just to show them all the tools. If you didn't feel comfortable or confident in this one, don't worry. No one is going to know what your project looks like if you don't want them to. This is for you to have a stress-free tinker together session with us with some help from yours truly in order to figure out what you can actually do in the software. So let me go ahead, if that's the last major question, and start going over what's going to be tomorrow's project and what you can do in order to prepare. So I don't know everyone's ages, but don't tell me. I don't need to know. I don't need to know. I don't need to know. But one of the things, even in my ripe old age of blank, <laughs> I always find myself needing to have a private oasis or a place where I can feel like I can unwind, I can relax, and I can be able to gather my thoughts and opinions about what I think the world is going through or my favorite book or a place where I could just binge my favorite YouTube videos or watch a Netflix video and not have, let's say, my partner or my, let's say, let's call him boyfriend, let my boyfriend actually interrupt or having somebody call me and interrupt what I'm doing, like a place that I can like retreat to. And ever since I was like, I think my earliest memory of creating a pillow fort was when I was like five years old. And so regardless of your age, and I think given these times, we all need to have our moments, especially when we're all stuck at home with other people or with distractions or things we don't want to deal with, to have our own private oasis. And so I want you to take that pen and paper and write a utensil. And I want you to think about all the things that are at your disposal where you live and what you can do in terms of creating an oasis. I'm not going to say pillow for it because it doesn't necessarily need to include pillows, but what could you create that can create an oasis for yourself using things in your home? And while you're thinking that, I'm going to show you a couple of tools here in Tinkercad because we're going to use Tinkercad tomorrow in order to create your perfect oasis. That will be the blueprint for you creating it in real life. So this is going to help us explore how to use real life items based on the Tinkercad model or the CAD models that we create in this environment. So while you're brainstorming and thinking about that or trying to figure out what I'm talking about, I'm going to show you some actual shapes that are available in Tinkercad that you can use to start getting those creative juices flowing. So here you'll see something that goes basic shapes, which is what we've been primarily using or working with today. You can see text and numbers. You can actually add numbers and text like I just did. We can also go into characters. So depending on if you need some special expression to your stuff, you can see the peace hand, you see flippers, a scuba. I don't know if you need flippers for your oasis, but make, it makes you think of the beach. We have Easter coming up. So you see there's like the Easter egg and a bunny and a bit bunny ear, who knows? You can also go down in the collections and you can see the OMSI, which is an amazing museum out in Portland. Shout out to them. I was gobsmacked at their actual interaction section. So if you are going to Portland after all this is over, highly, highly recommend going to that museum. And they have all of this furniture, hint, hint, that you can import into your Tinkercad model in order to actually create your perfect oasis. On top of that, if you scroll down even further, you can click the new collection, which thank you so much, Wayne, for helping put this together. This making at home collection is brand new by the Tinkercad team. This actually includes everyday items that you can find in your house that you may want to prototype with in the Tinkercad environment before you mess around with it in real life, such as your popsicle stick, your tissue roll, paper towel roll, pencil, a sharpened pencil, a penny even. Like my favorite discovery was the boba straw. 
So remember I showed you those Korean home cafe videos earlier in this webinar? So that boba straw is dear to me. I am new to boba or bubble tea, which is basically like a sweet milk tea, which is a combination of milk or an alternate milk and some all the sugar galore. So Google it if you've never heard of it before. But I love boba tea because I can suck up those little tapioca pearls or boba in my straw and chew it while drinking tea. If that sounds disgusting, don't knock it till you try it. But that was one of the cool discoveries I found in here, as well as like a beverage cap, metal can, and stuff like that, which is things you can find around in your house. So while you're designing and brainstorming what items are available to you to create your perfect oasis, I want you to keep in mind all of these resources. And so while you do that, that's where we're gonna end the actual practical designing session. I'm gonna stay online for another 10 minutes if you have any questions for me, but all of the recordings here are gonna be on YouTube. So if you wanna replay or you wanna go back over the actual build of our strawberry container, feel free to do so. If you want to share with me your actual container, because even though you all can't see each other's questions. I also can't see your actual computer screens. And I don't wanna see what you actually build. If you wanna share with me, ask an adult and use their social media profile. Go over to the send to button over here on the upper right hand corner, download your image, and then upload it onto Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, and tag us at Tinker Together. And you can feel free to tag Bajika or myself, Nisha McCray, or Autodesk or Tinkercad in order for us to actually see what you came up with during this actual webinar. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that to the chat so everyone can see that. But that way I can actually see your CAD models and I can give you feedback if you want. But make sure you ask adult permission because we don't want you getting in trouble because you're not allowed to be on social media platforms if you're under 13. So that's our heads up to you. So let me go ahead and add that information into the chat box. And now where is the chat log? Because now it's disappeared and it's not letting me see things. Oh, there we go. So do 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 do. If you would like to share your creations with us, please feel free to post on Instagram, Twitter. Anchor together. And recordings will be on my YouTube. If you want to replay or share what we just did here, I hope you all had fun. If you have any feedback for me, feel free to send it to me in the Q&A section of this. And until tomorrow, same time, I hope you guys have a great afternoon and don't forget to build, make, learn. And I hope we see you as we continue to tinker together. See you guys. Oh, your chat's disabled. Oh. Okay, so you guys can't see any messages that I send? Oh, that's a bummer. Ah! Okie dokie. Boom, okay. Okay, I see that it's been posted. I'll be here for another five minutes if you guys have any last minute questions for me. I think I have one question that does this qualify for Project Lead the Way? So we can talk with Project Lead the Way. I'll have some discussions. I know they have their Introduction to Engineering program. We'll see if this can qualify or this could be included as supplemental um, educational material for that actual course. So I actually, I actually have done previous work with them. So let me double check and see if this could qualify, but that's a great question. So I'll add that to my to-do list today to see if it's part of the Project Lead the Way.
will we be doing projects every day? Yes, we'll be doing projects Monday through Friday from um, two o'clock to four o'clock Eastern Standard Time. We may have some days that we end early because I wanna make sure you have time to brainstorm and don't wanna make things homework, especially because today is the first day. I want you all to take it easy. I'm not trying to stress you out. I think all of us are stressed out enough anyway. So we're gonna take it easy for today. And yes, as I said before, these recordings will be on YouTube. So you can go to Bajika's YouTube channel, M-B-A-D-I-K-A, -A, in order to actually see these as recordings. Let's see. I think, I think that should be about it. Okay. So what I'll say is thank you guys so much. I hope you had a great time. Please don't be shy in sharing more feedback with me. If you would like music, if you would like PowerPoint slides, if you would like more entertainment, maybe I should talk a little different. Just let me know. This is about you and making sure this is a comfortable retreat for you to tinker together with us. So you guys have a great afternoon and I'll catch you later. Ciao.